Yo, what is up guys, and welcome back to McAdies Entertainment. I'm your host as always, Adam McGahey. Just want to say thank you again to all of you helping grow this channel like crazy. We have broken 5,300 subscribers, which is something I never thought would happen. This is all thanks to your constant comments and support. You all are the true heroes. We continue today in our series of videos, breaking down the rotted, shambling, and rather stankin' corpses of everyone's favorite zombified heroes and villains, and that would be none other than Marvel Zombies. In our last video, we covered the full gory story of the slimy rotted symbiote himself, Zombie Venom. I will have that linked in the title card and in the description below. In today's video, we'll be going over the entire legend of the undead King of Wakanda himself, and that would be Zombie Black Panther. Similar to Spider-Man and Hulk that we did videos on recently, Black Panther was also in the Zombies episode of What If, where he helped play a key role to the surviving heroes escaping from the zombie horde. T'Challa's role in the Marvel Zombies comic is also integral to the overall story and is one of my favorites because it was my first main introduction to the character during my younger comic reading days. His tale spans across several decades and dimensions so without further ado, grab your popcorn, sit back, relax, and enjoy the tale of the undead warrior king himself, Zombie Black Panther. Who is he? Black Panther, like all of the other Marvel heroes of this dimension, encountered a deadly multiversal virus that transformed most of the world's superpowered individuals into ravenous, but still intelligent undead cannibals. He comes from Earth 2149, but prior to the pandemic, his origin was very similar to that of his main universe counterpart from Earth-616. Of course, all of that would soon change when a zombie version of the Sentry, who is basically Marvel's Superman, came to Earth and tore through the Avengers, infecting them with the virus, turning them into super-powered, flesh-hungry savages. As the infection spread throughout the planet, the likes of Black Panther were part of the initial resistance who fought back against the zombie threat. During the battle, T'Challa found himself partnering with the likes of Hank Pym's Giant Man. Being the observant and caring friend that he was, T'Challa noticed something was wrong with the shrinking particle scientist as he kept grabbing his stomach as they navigated the streets of New York. Knowing that he wasn't just sore from hitting ab day at the gym, Panther noticed that Pym had indeed been bitten in the scuffle. Calling his homie out on hiding such a danger to the team's survival, Pym then remarks that he was quite upset at the Panther King for noticing. He then proceeds to grow in size and smashes T'Challa to the ground, knocking him out cold. He then tells the unconscious hero that he was sorry for this, but would soon be a zombie and was not about to be caught dead, pun intended, without a meal. He then dragged T'Challa's unconscious body down the dark steps of his dingy lab, where he planned to keep the Wakandan warrior as a living snack cabinet once he turned. So yeah, Giant Man is absolutely the type in a zombie movie not to only hide the fact that he was bitten, but in fact will get offended that you noticed, will then knock you out, and then save you as a snack before he even turns into a zombie. Pretty messed up, bro. You're kind of even making the people who hide their bites look good by comparison. The infection would then spread across the globe, transforming the vast majority of the superpowered population into flesh-eating monsters. The likes of Zombie Reed Richards and Tony Stark had even repaired a machine that would allow them and their meat-eating boys to travel to other dimensions so they would have access to a whole multiversal buffet. However, they were interrupted when the mutant Magneto intervened and being the true OP king that he was, blew up the device locking the zombies in this dimension to starve. Not happy at the dude for being such a party pooper, Giant Man and the others surrounded the mutant like a pack of wild slobbering dogs. More like zombie dogs, to be precise. Man, that makes me think of the Resident Evil dogs. I will never forget the irrational fear I had of Dobermans as a kid because of that game. Okay, getting sidetracked. On with the video. This then led to an intense chase between the Master of Magnetism and the Horde. Despite getting in some great hits, like chopping Colonel America's head in half with his own shield, slicing off Hawkeye's head with the shield, and then shooting Thor in the neck with one of Hawkeye's arrows, 
Magneto was soon cornered by the cannibals when Zombie Wasp snuck up behind him and bit the dude's juggler right out of his neck. The Hangry Avengers then tore poor Magneto open, resulting in a violent and bloody end to one of the coolest and best dressed villains in Marvel Comics. After this light snack, Giant Man and the gang then kicked back, wondering where their next big feast would come from. Before they thought they'd pass out due to low blood sugar, they realized Uber Eats soon arrived in the form of the Silver Surfer, who came to the planet to scan it to see if it was nutritious enough for his master Galactus to consume. Before they could even get a nibble of the dude's chrome-plated skin, he zipped off to peruse the rest of the globe. The starving supers then organized a meeting where they would all meet up to decide just what they were going to do about this quickly diminishing supply of food. Once the date was set, Giant Man then snuck off, claiming that he was going to go find his wife Janet, aka the Wasp. Pym then made his way back to his serial killer basement lab and entered a secret room where he was keeping a strange coffin-like object. He then opened the device, revealing the still unconscious T'Challa who Pym had in a chemically induced coma, now complete with a missing arm. It is then revealed that Pym had been strategically slicing off bits of Panther's body so he'd have a reliable food source. This aimed to keep his zombie brain active and sharp when flesh supply would run low. So it was kind of like protein bars for zombies, except much more fleshy and meaty. Probably had more protein though. Pym then put on his psycho killer rubber gloves, grabbed a saw, and then used it to legit slice off the leg of his unconscious friend, which he then prepares to eat. Uh, T'Challa, you might want to cover up those feet next time you're in Shuri's lab, bro. There just might be a hungry zombie lurking around, waiting to gobble him up. As he stitches the cut flesh back together, Giant Man proclaims that this undead experience has really turned him on to the taste of human flesh. He goes on to say that even if a cure is found and things go back to normal, he would still eat people. Alright guys, I think it's safe to say that Hank Pym is a certified psychopath. From the what if episode where he kills the Avengers to this, the world is pretty much doomed if this guy ever decides to join the dark side. Let's pray MCU Pym stays nice and happy. Let's just like give the man unlimited Baskin Robbins or something. No one could be sad with infinite ice cream. Before Giant Man could sink his teeth into some nice panther foot, he is then approached by his dear wife, the Wasp. Demanding to know why her husband would hide such a tasty snack from her, Wasp then opens fire on Pym with her energy blast, only for him to grow in size and smack her into the wall. Before she could get away and alert the others, Pym then picks Janet up and proceeds to bite her head off. He then throws her headless body aside and spits the head out on the floor as zombie flesh apparently tastes terrible to other zombies. Yeah bro, this is a lot to digest. I'm thinking once this is over, uh, you guys are going to need some serious couples therapy. Uh, does someone call zombie Dr. Phil? After the scuffle, Giant Man worked up quite an appetite and set his eyes on Black Panther's foot, having a nice little marinade in some blood across the room. As Pym begins to nibble on his little vibranium snack, Black Panther begins to wake up, mumbling for Pym to kill him. Pym refuses and tells T'Challa that if he were to die, he would taste no better than his poor wife's head that he just spit onto the ground. He tells the Wakandan King to shut up so he can peacefully go find a fresh sedative so he can put him back in his coma. Okay guys, I think it may be official. This Hank Pym just may be the worst person ever, both as a human and a zombie. We then cut to the other heroes who gathered together in the middle of New York City for one big zombie conference where they discuss just what to do with their food supply running out. They then see a flashing blast of light in the sky, which came from the Silver Surfer, who finished his global road trip. He then announced that his master Galactus was en route and planned to consume the entire planet and all of its inhabitants. Ignoring the dude and just seeing a living, breathing Three Musketeers bar, Silver Rapper and all, the Super Zombies attacked. Not about to go out like a punk, the Surfer brutally fought back, blasting the cannibals with waves of his cosmic energy. He managed to kill countless of the undead, but was soon overpowered when a zombified Hulk arrived and proceeded to bite the poor man's head clean off. As Hulk chowed down on Chrome Dome, Giant Man showed up conveniently right as the fighting concluded. He grabbed Spider-Man and Iron Man and booked it over to the Surfer's corpse, 
where he and a handful of other heroes got a taste of the Herald's cosmic flesh. Upon eating the poor shiny spaceman, Colonel America and the others who ate him realized that not only was this a delicious meal, but they also inherited his powers in the process. Talk about a combo meal! Giant Man then proposed to the others that they use this newfound strength to blast, fry, and eat their fellow superpowered undead. Which of course they do. Seriously, something's wrong with this guy. He seems to be loving being a zombie a little too much. As the boys chowed down on their friendly feast, we then cut to T'Challa, who managed to escape the captivity of Hank Pym's lab. He forged a crutch for himself as he hobbled around the vacant streets of New York while carrying the decapitated head of Zombie Wasp, but was still very much alive. It is then revealed that Wasp had helped Panther get away and begged for him to give her a piece of his tasty flesh as a reward. Disturbed by such a request, Panther refuses and continues to walk throughout the city, terrified and saddened at the mass genocide that had been committed. Being the tenacious little zombie head she was, Janet continues to beg for just a little finger or something from the Wakandan warrior. A frustrated T'Challa then shouts at the wasp head, telling her that this was all insane and that the sickness was all in her head, and that since she was indeed just a head, there was nowhere for food to go. How could she be hungry? T'Challa then sits down on a nearby piece of rubble to collect his thoughts on all that had happened and contemplated if this was all just a bad dream. A voice from behind then confronts Panther, calling him a monster. The voice is revealed to come from Fabian Cortez, ruler of the Acolytes, a group of mutants loyal to Magneto and his teachings. They ask what they presume to be a zombified T'Challa, where Magneto is, unaware that their beloved leader had recently become a fresh can of zombie chow. T'Challa retorts that he has no idea where the guy is and reveals to the group that he is still very much human. Cortez then tells T'Challa that he was rather shocked to encounter survivor of the zombie onslaught, which T'Challa responds by saying that he was not surprised that the group thought he was infected, given his current condition. Not gonna lie, if I saw a half-naked man in a panther suit walking down the street holding a head, I'd be scared too. Thinking this was a trick by the zombies, the other acolyte members proposed destroying T'Challa before he could attack. Cortez then ordered his men to stand down before he can make an official decision on what to do. One of the mutants then disobeys the order and goes to attack Black Panther, only for him to whip Wasp Hungry Head right at the man who bit out his neck. Another one of the mutants goes to attack, only to get completely owned by T'Challa, who whacked the dude right in the head with his crutch. Mind you, this man only has one arm and one leg. Stuff like this is exactly why Black Panther is one of the goats in Marvel history. Cortez then ordered for everyone to stand down and stop this madness as they are the only living people left. He invites T'Challa to come with him and the group aboard Asteroid M, the orbital space station belonging to Magneto. T'Challa accepts the invitation and asks the group to bring the wasp head with them, for she was his friend and under supervision she would not be a threat. Not necessarily understanding why or how T'Challa would care for such a monster, Cortez accepted and had the pair come aboard. It was during this time that the Cosmic Zombie Boys had finished polishing off their friends when they noticed that the Silver Surfer was telling the truth and the World Conqueror Galactus had indeed come to the planet announcing his plans to eat it. Seeing a giant purple snack man, the boys attacked only for Galactus to show he was basically Master Hand from Smash Bros and proceeded to attack with giant laser beams that shot from his fingertips. Knowing that retreat was the best option at this time, Hank Pym led the group back to his lab so they could work on a strategy to take the Titan down. Knowing that questions would be asked about the Black Panther-sized coffin in his lab, Pym was going to let the group know that he was keeping T'Challa on ice, only to see that his backup snack had somehow gotten away. Shocked to see this, Pym tells the group that the big secret that he was hiding was that he had to kill his wife, Janet. So, he's a cannibal, a betrayer, and a liar. This man, he's gotta go. We then go to Black Panther and the Acolytes who arrive to Asteroid M. It is here that Panther meets Reynolds, the head scientist aboard the station. Upon meeting, Reynolds is fascinated that the group brought him a specimen in the form of Wasp Head. 
The overjoyed scientist then promises that he would use it to study the virus and find a potential cure. The Chala agrees to hand Janet over if and only if the experiments on her to find the cure are ethical and do not bring any harm to her. My boy T'Challa is probably one of the most noble Marvel heroes. Even though his friend had turned into a cannibal zombie head, he's still looking out for her. T'Challa for the win. He then asks the group if there is a more efficient way of navigating the station. Given his current physical status, it would probably be a little hard to wobble around on a crutch all day on a spaceship. He is then approached by the mechanical genius Forge, who shows Panther his expertise in his design of cybernetic limbs. My boy getting a robot arm and leg. Superheroes with cyber limbs are like the peanut butter and chocolate of comics. It's just, it's just perfect. We are then taken back to the Undead Avengers back at Hank Pym's lab, who work on a plan to beat Galactus. The smartest of the super zombies then construct a device that would allow them to concentrate their cosmic power into one unified beam. After a nice 80s music work montage, the zombies finish the device, aim it at Galactus and fire, causing a huge beam of energy to shoot out and strike the World Eater, sending him tumbling to the ground. This then causes the boys to have a light scuffle with their former zombified villains who plan to mooch off the hero's food that they just worked so hard for. However, the baddies proved to be no match for these cosmic supers who blasted them the kingdom come. There was, however, one casualty on the side of the heroes, which happened to be Colonel America, who got his brain yeeted out of his rotted head by the Red Skull. See, man, that was easy. That's all you had to do in the first movie. Just pull the guy's brain out. No need for that Tesseract nonsense. A wounded Galactus then tried to get up, swearing revenge on these hellish beings for what they had done. The starring supers, not about to let the big boy get back up, left on Galactus, tearing open this gigantic bag of fleshy chips. We then fast forward five years later, where T'Challa, armed with a fresh robotic arm and leg, and the acolytes come to Earth to see if it was safe to return. It was during this time that T'Challa had fallen in love with and married one of the acolyte members, Lisa Hendricks, whom they had a child with named T'Challa. The group then debated if it was safe to explore the planet's ruins, where we then see the Wasp, who also got some sweet cybernetic upgrades in these past few years. During this time, Reynolds placed her head in a jar, complete with a robot body to command. Upgrades, people. Upgrades. She then informs the team that the ship's sensors completed its scan, and that the entire planet was confirmed to be deserted. Knowing that starvation does not kill the zombies, T'Challa and the gang then pondered just where these undead could have gone. It is then revealed that by consuming Galactus, like the Silver Surfer, the Cannibal Avengers' powers leveled up, granting them the ability to hop planet to planet, completely devouring it and its people, and all while in matching purple jumpsuits. Boys gotta stay fashionable when eating up the galaxy. During their galactic conquest, the zombies traveled to the Skrull homeworld, where they completely decimated the population like boxes of green popcorn. It was here that they encountered the T'Challa from the main Marvel Universe from Earth-616, who was mistakenly sent to this dimension along with Storm and members of the Fantastic Four. The main universe Black Panther and the team tried to save who they could and even did battle with the cosmic super zombies. This T'Challa also met his Zombieverse counterpart who explained the situation. Honestly, a Black Pantherverse movie would be pretty sick. We need more T'Challas around. It would be the most wholesome thing ever. 616 Panther and the Fantastic Four managed to escape the planet and return to their Earth while the zombies tapped into the true power they inherited from Galactus and used it to eat and blow up the entire planet. Y'all thought the Death Star was bad? How about ravenous, super-powered, hungry zombies eating you and then blowing up the planet? Honestly, I think I'll take the Death Star. Marvel Zombies making Darth Vader look like a good guy by comparison. The zombie boys then spend the next 40 years on a complete universal bender, eating every planet in sight. That is, until they reach the edge of the universe and realize they had rid the entire galaxy nearly clean of life. The group then remember the multiversal machine made by Reed Richards and Tony Stark that was destroyed by Magneto. They then plot a course back to Earth where they plan to repair it and unlock the multiverse of Munchies. 
We are then taken back to Earth, where we see Black Panther's grandson, Kishamba, roaming the streets of New York City. During his journey, the boy heard a scream coming from amongst the rubble. Thinking that someone was in trouble, Kishamba rushed over to see if he could help. He digs the rocks away, only to discover a rather terrifying sight, which came in the form of the still-living decapitated head of Hawkeye that was cut off all those years ago by Magneto. Clint's head then begs for Kishamba to help him. Kishamba, being wise of the ways of the zombies after the stories his grandfather told him, asks if the head would bite him. Hawkeye, being cured of his hunger after not eating for so long, promised that he would not attack and just needed someone to talk to. Honestly, this kid is like the bravest person I've ever seen. I am a full-grown 28-year-old man. If I found some decapitated head talking to me under some rocks, not gonna lie, I just might scream out like a little girl. Being the noble child he was, Kishama then picked up the hero's head and walked it over to the settlement so his grandfather T'Challa could help him. It is then revealed that this was not just any settlement. During this time, T'Challa and the Acolytes rebuilt what they could of society here in New York and renamed it New Wakanda, complete with a castle and everything. My boy been busy. Here T'Challa ruled with his wife Lisa as they worked with Forge to help rebuild society and replenish the overall population. However, not all was well during these 40 years. The former leader of the Acolytes, Fabian Cortez, had died, but he had a son named Malcolm who was not the biggest fan of T'Challa or the fact that he now ruled over the Acolytes. This then created a power struggle between Malcolm and T'Challa, who thought he was too old and weak to rule. This man out here calling Black Panther a boomer. Nobody does that to my king. T'Challa, being the good king that he was, says that he was elected king to all, not just those who agreed with him and bound to protect the remaining people on Earth, including the Acolytes. As the group debated on what to do, Kishava came strolling into the palace, just casually showing off Hawkeye's head like it was nothing. Black Panther's face here displays exactly how I'd feel. Absolutely terrified. Reynolds, still around after these 40 years, and absolutely rocking a bald head, now placed Hawkeye's head in one of Wasp's old robot bodies, complete with curves and everything. Thick Hawkeye, everybody. Let's give him a round of applause. He tells T'Challa that after spending all this time under the rubble, it had left him mentally scarred, but his hunger was now gone, leaving him harmless for the time being. At the same time, the hot-headed Malcolm Cortez held a rally with his other acolytes, who agreed that the Chala's time for ruling was over. They devised a plan that night to send an assassin who snuck in the Black Panther's bedchamber. Armed with a knife, the assassin stabbed the Chala right in the stomach as he slept next to his wife. Not cool, bro. You want to challenge this dude to the throne? You do it in ritual combat. Have, have none of these dudes seen the Black Panther movie? T'Challa kicks the dude with his sick robot leg, calling him out for this petty attack, telling him that this was treason. Not being down for the count just yet, the assassin comes back and slices the warrior's stomach open, causing his entrails to come pouring out. Hearing the commotion, Wasp zaps the assassin with her energy blast and comes to Panther's aid. As he lay mortally wounded, Janet informs Panther's wife Lisa that he will die unless she does something drastic right here and right now. Oh no, Wasp, you don't mean to go into... Oh yeah, yeah, she did it. Wasp then proceeds to chomp right down into T'Challa's neck, infecting him with the virus. After getting a taste of some mortal meat for the first time in 40 years, the hunger overtook Wasp once again, who then lunged after Lisa, hoping to get some nice tasty seconds. Just then, Panther grabs her from behind and whips her into the wall, demanding for her to leave his wife alone. He then tells her if she needs someone to eat, she can help him eat this guilty killer just chillin' knocked out on the floor. See, even in undeath, this dude is still just as noble. Here Spider-Man completely devoured his wife when he turned, but Panther, he's still out to protect his queen. The pair proceed to completely devour the man right in front of Lisa's eyes as she watched completely terrified. Poor lady. Not only did she see her husband get his stomach sliced open, but then she also then saw him turn into a blood-hungry cannibal who then ate a man whole before her very eyes. I think, uh, I think some couples counseling is going to be in order here. Zombie Dr. Phil, I'm going to need you to come back, please. 
Terrified at what he had just done, T'Challa did not know how to process his actions. Wasp, who was of course no stranger to fleshy snacks, told the Panther King he would get over it and that they would need to quarantine themselves in order for the hunger to wear off so Panther can resume his duties as leader forever. Eternal Zombie King Black Panther. Sounds great, right? I mean, what else could possibly go wrong? Well, it could, because let's not forget, we have a whole gang of cosmic-powered undead Avengers on the way. Mom, I'm scared. After a few weeks of lockdown with Wasp, their hunger faded, allowing them to return to society. Man, that must have been just so boring. They didn't have video games to play in there or anything. They join up with Forge so they confront Malcolm about his treacherous ways, but a little problem just so happened to stand in their way, which was the arrival of the Zombie Avengers. This is like the one universe where you absolutely do not want the Avengers to show up. Put those things back where it came from, or so help me. Surprised at this delicious little settlement Black Panther had created, the starving Supers were all ready to sink their nasty teeth right into them. T'Challa tried to call out to the humanity they once had, knowing that they used to be good people. But this only made the likes of Zombie Hulk upset, who was impatient at all the talking, and jumped down and proceeded to start snacking on as many survivors as he could. He is then stopped by Giant Man, who told the Hunger Game Giant that they needed to be strategic about things this time around, otherwise they would be right back without food again. He then proposed turning New Wakanda into a breeding program, which would result in an unlimited food supply for him and the others. Finally realizing the true psychopath this guy was, Spider-Man then blasted a hole in the side of his head, refusing to participate in this any longer. This then led to a zombie mutiny with him and Luke Cage rallying together, who fought against their former pals. Ooh, zombie fight! Let's go! Panther and Wasp joined in the fight as a distraction, so the remaining humans could get to safety. They were able to push most of the heroes to the edge of the palace, where Reynolds was able to dispatch a shield around it, locking them outside. However, his aim was not completely perfect, as the zombie gladiator was still left inside, all ready to help himself to the survivor snacks. Panther told the alien he would not allow him to arm his people, as he lunged at him to attack. Gladiator, barely thinking this was a challenge, proceeded to rip the Chala's heart right out Mortal Kombat style. This is like the first time I gotta say I am happy that a hero was a zombie. Otherwise, my boy would not have survived that. As the fighting continued, Forge joined into the fray with one of Iron Man's old suits he repurposed for himself. He, Spider-Man, and Luke Cage then worked together to fry Gladiator's head, turning it into a fine gooey mess. Man, Marvel Zombies has everything. Space laser blasting zombies and exploding mohawk dudes. This series is just the best. Swearing to find a way in, Iron Man and the other cannibals flew off to Reed Richards' Baxter building so they could get their hands on the multiversal machine. Back at New Wakanda, Forge and Reynolds worked together to patch the heroes up who were injured during the battle. They even hooked Luke Cage up with some sweet robot legs too. During the commotion, the Hulk had reverted back to Bruce Banner, which they kept sedated and strapped to a table. Although I gotta say, that does not look too safe. I mean, this man is the Hulk. He could definitely escape that. No? He can't? Okay, bro, whatever you say. Malcolm Cortez then burst into the room with his troops, declaring that these undead must be stopped. Forge then talked some sense into the madman, who told him that these zombies were harmless and that the true dangerous ones would soon return. He went on to tell him that they only stood a fraction of a chance of survival with these good zombies on their side. Malcolm for once agreed, as Panther rallied the others together. Forge then reveals to the group that he had brought Reed Richards' multiversal machine here at New Wakanda, where he planned to use it as a last resort for he and the survivors to escape. However, no matter what he did, he could not get the device to work. Hmm, have you tried turning it on and off again, bro? Maybe it's like an old Nintendo game and you just gotta blow into it. You know, works every time. Spider-Man then tells the group that this is the exact device the other Avengers were looking for and would soon realize that it was here and would return to get it and kill everybody there. Panther agrees and tells them that they do not have the numbers to face off against the combined powers of the superpowered zombies. It is then that a worried looking Reynolds offers up that he just might have a solution 
when it comes to the numbers department. He then leads the group to a secret room within the facility where he was storing a secret weapon that was created in the event of the zombies returning. Now this was not just any weapon, this was a pretty messed up Frankenstein style creation as it was the dead body of T'Challa's son T'Chana, yes that same little baby all those years back after the events of the initial infection. T'Chana had died in an accident in adulthood and was then revived in zombified form and then had his brain replaced with that of Colonel America's who they found of the remains of after Red Skull ripped it out. I know that was a mouthful, but that is honestly probably one of the weirdest and most messed up things I have read in a Marvel comic in a very long time. Definitely one of those panels that requires some therapy. After Reynolds told T'Challa what he did to the body of his son, this sent the Panther King into a rather justifiable rage who leapt at this mad scientist whom he thought was his friend. Frank and Cap then attacked T'Challa protecting the man who gave him new life, all while muttering random Captain America catchphrases due to him having half a brain. So basically he was like a living action figure who keeps repeating the same things over and over and never runs out of batteries. T'Challa pleads with his son to stop and asks if he recognizes him, but Reynolds informs him that this is only the body of his son, no part of his mind or soul exists. It was merely a vessel to power the fragments of Colonel America's brain. Spider-Man and Cage leap on Frank and Cap to get him to calm down, as Reynolds tells him that T'Challa is a friend. Forge then reveals that he too took part in this experiment, which completely enrages T'Challa, for T'Challa had married Forge's daughter, whom they had his grandson Kishamba with together. Over the edge that he would do this to his own son-in-law, Panther punches Forge with all of his might sending the aging mutant to the ground, coughing up blood, barely able to speak. Honestly, that was deserved. Not a good plan there, Forge. T'Challa apologized for hitting his friend so hard as he forgot the strength of the panther god running through his undead veins. He helped him up apologizing, but told him he would never be forgiven for what he had done. The good zombie heroes then regroup and plan their next move for when the bad zombie boys inevitably return. As expected, the Undead Avengers search the Baxter building, realize that they were tricked, and Iron Man puts two and two together that Forge had the device all along. They return to New Wakanda, rather angry and hangry about this, ready to throw hands with T'Challa and the others. Meeting at the barrier, T'Challa proposes a deal that they will lower the shield and give the zombies the portal, if and only if they promise to leave the New Wakanda citizens alone. After considering the terms and conditions of this proposal, the zombies agree, and T'Challa had Reynolds lower the shield. See? Even as a zombie, T'Challa can still use his charm and talk people out of things. Just like he did with Thanos in What If? What can I say? Dude is charismatic! However, as charismatic as he is, Panther was still wise and tactical and had Reynolds raise the shield back up around him and the zombies as they battled outside the new Wakandan border. Surprised at this double cross, even the likes of Giant Man had to give the guy props for being so cunning. Of course he would be impressed. This dude is like the zombie master of betrayal and double crosses. Similar to last time, Reynolds' aim with the shield was not exactly perfect, as this time Iron Man was actually locked inside New Wakanda, all ready to help himself to the tasty morsels that lived inside. As the hungry Tony gleefully floated around the halls looking for the lunchroom, he was cornered by Frankencap, Forge, and Malcolm and his men, who were all ready to give this brain-eating billionaire the business. As the battle poured on outside, T'Challa demanded for the heroes to put an end to this now. Being fed up with all of the meal delays, Giant Man smashes down onto T'Challa, turning most of his body into a mess of red goop. Wasp then goes to avenge the wounded king, but Giant Man retorts that he did not miss his nagging wife during this lost time and proceeds to smash her head, claiming that he got used to the feeling of her not being around. See, look at that devilish smile! This dude is loving this! Just when he thought things could not get any worse, of course Bruce Banner just had to wake up and finagle his way out of his restraints that Forge put him in. Dude, I asked if you said that these were good and you said yes! Now you got a rogue zombie Hulk on the loose! Jeez, man. Dude can make awesome robot arms, but can't make good straps? Come on, Forge. Get it together, bro. Banner then finds his way to the control room where Reynolds was operating the shield. 
He tells the frightened scientist that he had to eat him in order to keep his hulking transformation under control. He then lunges at the man, pressing him up against the control stick that operated the barrier. This caused it to lower, letting all the hungry boys inside, ready to help themselves to an early Thanksgiving. Giant Man, of course, being the most selfish zombie that he was, finds his way to the room holding the survivors, where he then goes to help himself first to none other than T'Challa's wife. Poor lady, she's been having like the roughest week ever here. Before he could take a bite, Giant Man noticed a bizarre occurrence within his body. After all this time without food, similar to Wasp and Hawkeye, his hunger too had subsided, and for the first time in 40 years, he was no longer hungry. Wolverine, ready to help himself to double portions, got ready to carve up the citizens, but was stopped by Giant Man, who explained the situation. Iron Man then flew in with the other heroes who also regained their sanity and were no longer a threat. Not realizing the boys had come back to the light, Luke Cage comes in and cracks Giant Man with a much needed sock to the face, along with Spider-Man carrying the stump body of T'Challa on his back. Dude is kind of like a little Yoda backpack now, except a little less sanitary, you know, because he's like bleeding blood and guts all over the place. Ew. The zombies then call a truce to Panther and the others, which is not accepted at all by the likes of Malcolm, who swears to kill the creatures. He is stopped by Forge, who tells him that since the heroes are now good, they can be a big help in rebuilding society. This only angers the mutant leader, who calls the man a fool for even considering working with these monsters any longer. However, before things could evolve too far into an episode of Jerry Springer, our boy Bruce Banner got a wee bit too hangry, who then transformed into the Hulk and smashed his way into the room, all ready to help himself to the live buffet. The heroes then tried to stop the rampaging Green Titan, but they were no match for his undead strength. This resulted in the death of several supers, such as Phoenix, Fire Lord, Hawkeye, and even Iron Man, who got stomped so hard his guts blew right out of his helmet. Somewhere out there, the folks at Mortal Kombat are smiling down at this one. Reynolds, knowing that the only way to calm this dude down was for him to get what he wanted, so he offered himself as a sacrifice. T'Challa leaped in to stop this from happening, but was stopped by Wolverine, who told him that it was too late. Hulk gladly took the guy up on this offer, and gobbled him up right in front of the others, who watched in horror at the monsters that they had been for so long. Just like his comrades before him, Hulk too noticed his hunger fade, causing him to revert back into puny zombie banner. He then pleads with the others to kill him, as this would be the only solution to this nightmare. The others agree, and use their power to fry Banner's head, instantly killing the hangry Hulk. Later on, the Avengers work to clean up the rubble from their bloody battle. During the commotion, Forge even finds Wasp's head, still very much intact. He attaches it to a new body, and also crafts a new body for T'Challa, where the group held a funeral for the fallen heroes. Afterwards, the heroes then meet Giant Man and Malcolm at the portal to discuss their next steps. Giant Man reveals that he and Malcolm were surprisingly able to fix the multiversal portal quite easily and were prepared to go to other dimensions to gather to supplies to fix the society that they had destroyed. However, things take a turn for the worse when Malcolm shows his hand and reveals that this machine was so easily fixed because he had self-sabotaged it and was keeping the key parts. He tells the group that he likes it here for it is manageable to rule and does not want some zombie superheroes fixing the world to what it once was. He then tells T'Challa that he was the one who killed his son T'Challa, organized his murder, and would soon kill his grandson Kishamba and take the throne for himself. Before Black Panther could do anything about this, Malcolm activates the machine, sending the heroes to worlds unknown. Forge then bounds into the room asking to know what Malcolm had just done, pleading that they need to bring the heroes back. Malcolm then beats the elderly mutant to death with his bare hands, telling him that the undead were gone and that new Wakanda was his to rule. Honestly, I've been griping on Giant Man this whole time, but this dude is a psycho too. Honestly, new Wakanda may be in worse shape with this guy than even Pride Rock was when Scar took it over. Not a pretty sight here, folks. While this was the initial end for T'Challa's story, it was later revived in the final issue of Marvel Zombies Return. 
After the zombies went through the portal, they were transported to Earth Z, which was a dimension very similar to theirs before the infection broke out. However, the dimensional trip altered their cells, causing them to lose their cosmic powers, but also caused their hunger to return, causing them to spread the infection to this world's heroes as well. This then caused some of the most powerful infected to form a new Zombie Avengers group. This consisted of the likes of Moon Knight, Sentry, Quasar, Submariner, Thundra, Super Scroll, and Quicksilver. The group met at their table, comprised of the mangled bodies of the so-called heroes who opposed them. It is then revealed by Super Scroll that Black Panther 2 had been transported to this dimension, where he found his way to the Scroll homeworld and infected its greatest warriors, creating an army of undead, which he used to rally against this dimension's Avengers. However, despite this power at his disposal, T'Challa was no match for the combined might of the zombie heroes and was brutally killed where they then kept his severed hand as a trophy on their wall with his name spelled out in his own blood. And that is the tragic end to our favorite undead Wakandan warrior, Zombie Black Panther. His tale is one of the most involved in the Marvel Zombies timeline and is one of my favorites. I love how long T'Challa was able to survive without becoming infected and honestly would have loved to see him somehow survive throughout the whole thing, perhaps using Wakandan technology to replace his infected parts just like how Rhodey did with Stark Tech. To this day, it still makes me sad how tragic his end was for I would have loved for him to somehow find his way home and protect his family from the likes of Malcolm. Regardless though, I love this story and T'Challa's involvement in it and would love to see it continued somehow someday. Now what are your thoughts on this? Did you know this about Zombie Black Panther? Was there something I missed? What other comic characters should we cover? Sound off in the comments. Also be sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed today's content, subscribe to the channel, and tap the bell icon to be notified of all of our latest videos. Thank you so much for watching. I leave today's video with a moment of silence for the true Black Panther Chadwick Boseman who lost his battle with cancer already more than a year ago. You gave true life to this character and will be truly missed. God bless you all and I will see you in the next one.